Hi, good morning everyone. And hopefully if you're in the States um, or Canada, you um, had a great um, either Canada Day or 4th of July, which all happened this past week. Um, I am about to go live with um, the Fitness Explorer and we're gonna join right now. Hey. Hi, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm not too bad at all, thank you. Good, good. Great to have you. I wanted to give um, a brief introduction just for people who may not have um, or who are not familiar with your work. Um, and then I wanted to talk with you all about exercise. So um, for people who may be familiar we have um, the Fitness Explorer with us today, Daryl Edwards. Daryl is coming to us um, from London. And he actually is an international speaker and very well known and respected for his work on um, exercise, but using exercise, um, you know, sometimes we hear the word exercise and we groan, but he <laughs> has developed a way to encourage movement more of a play or more of a um, natural state of moving our body and not necessarily looking at um, you have to run, you know, X amount of minutes per day, but looking how we can make our um, bodies move naturally and increase physical activity, which is exercise. Um, he is the founder of Primal, the Primal Play Method. And so he makes activity fun, effective and engaging um, while encouraging individuals to live a more healthier life. So if you'd like to find out um, more about Daryl, I would say follow him on his Instagram, um, which is the Fitness Explorer. And then his website um, is also the fitnessexplorer.com. Um, no, it's not. Not, it's not. I'm sorry, keep saying that. It's Primal Play. It's primalplay.com. Yeah, that was sorry, the old. Primalplay.com. I keep yeah. saying that. <laughs> it's primalplay.com. I need to correct that. Um, no but that's what um, we want to talk about today. And uh, just a quick disclaimer, even though um, Daryl is a world-renowned expert, his advice is not to be taken personally in terms of um, in the place of your physician. And even though I'm a physician, my what we're discussing here is for general purposes only. Um, unfortunately, we have to state disclaimers like that because of the world we live in today. But um, other than that, Daryl, is there anything else you'd like to tell us about yourself before we begin? And then I have some questions to ask. Yes. Yeah, so what I would like to say is, <laughs> yes, we do live in a very litigious world uh, and we have to have disclaimers. But at the same time, um, the message or the discussion that we'll be having in terms of the importance of movement and physical activity is applicable to all human beings. Yeah. So if you're a human, if you're a human being, um, it's impossible. It's impossible to be healthy um, in a sedentary state. So if you if you're living a sedentary lifestyle, it's not possible to maintain uh, good health so so uh, i think it's really important for us to to recognize the importance of physical activity not just from an aesthetic point of view but from a, a, an improvement in health point of view yes that's very important um because it can go on both ends of the spectrum you may have people who um you know physically look very skinny or do you know what i mean fit whatever stereotype you want to use um, but are very sedentary, and that's not healthy. Do you know what yes. I mean? That's not healthy. Um, so it's not simply that people who are, you know, overweight or large um, need to move more. Everyone can move more. We've, I mean, we don't move nearly a fraction that we did probably even just 50 years ago. So yes, um, sure. it's, we have a lot of work to do in that area, certainly. Yes. Um, so in terms of that, so um, how did you become interested in um, fitness and health? Because you're looking at your bio, you, this is a kind of developed over time into a new sort of, not new, but a different sort of passion for you in terms of what you originally went to school to do. So how did you yes. um, become interested in health and fitness? Yeah, so my, my first career um, was working 
within investment banking, mm -hmm. uh, technology. So I was a software engineer, a computer programmer. Um, I developed software back for Microsoft in the, in the 90s, uh, so quite some time ago. Got headhunted um, by an investment bank, and I worked within finance for the next sort of 20 years or so. So you can imagine very lucrative career, mm -hmm. um, very highly stressed, working long hours, 16 hour days were a, a regular mm -hmm. occurrence. Um, I was also very responsible for systems around the planet, which oh. meant sleep was, uh, <laughs> was not prized that much. Right. Something that was done once work was done. So I was sleep deprived, very sedentary, you know, surrounded by computer screens, had a very unhealthy, poor diet, just ate whatever was available. Mm -hmm. And at an annual health check, I was told I was pre-diabetic. I had a really poor lipid profile. So I had, you know, very high risk of cardiovascular disease. So mm -hmm. I had a high risk of, of heart disease and stroke, heart, elevated triglycerides, really poor lipid profile. I was anemic. I had severe hypertension, high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So those are just some of some of the issues and the solution presented to me was to take metformin so medication for my blood glucose control right. um to stop me being pre-diabetic so i was literally on the cusp of being full-blown type 2 diabetic um some beta blockers to reduce my blood pressure to control my mm -hmm. blood pressure and also some statins to control my cholesterol mm -hmm. um so that was the recommendation yeah. and i would have taken I would have taken my doctor's recommendation, but I was concerned about the side effects. So I was just like, I'd be the, I'd be the person who would take these meds and probably keel over in five minutes. Um, so I was just really concerned. I was like, is there anything else that I can do? Right. And it was like, well, if you don't do this, you're probably not going to see out the next 10 years. Um, that's what I was told. And I was like, hold on a second. I do remember reading somewhere at some point in time, that exercise could help to reduce blood pressure, one mm -hmm. way to control blood pressure. So I was like, let me try, at least let me try some exercise. Right. Let me, let me join a gym and see if that will work. And that, so that's what I did. So I was like, let me, I'm sure I can, I can do this for a few weeks right. without it being too harmful. <laughs> um, let me try that. And let me see what happens. And so my blood pressure came down. Um, you know, my blood glute sugars started to come down. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was having, I had a 30 day checkup, um, then I had a 60 day checkup and a 90 day checkup. And within about two to three months, pretty much everything had normalized. Nice. So, so, um, so just being more physically active mm -hmm. started to improve my health markers. And, and I was like, oh my goodness, you know, is it still, and I was really concerned. I was asking my doctors lots of questions. Like, is it still okay? Are you sure the results are okay? Yes, they are. Continue to do what you're doing. Right. So, so that having that amber warning, that early warning that things weren't looking good, changing my lifestyle but in, by incorporating more physical activity mm -hmm. um, uh, and seeing this transformation, which was for me was purely about health. So I was a skinny, fat individual mm -hmm. or in, in clinical terms known as a toffee. So thin on the outside, T-O-F-I, thin on the outside, fat on the inside. So okay. high levels of visceral fat, high levels of fat surrounding my internal organs. Mm -hmm. um, didn't have much lean body mass because, you know, I was slim. So, so outwardly, there wasn't really a problem, but I wasn't, I wasn't exercised. I wasn't physically active. Right. So I didn't have much lean, lean body mass. So I had a high body fat percentage. Mm -hmm. My BMI was normal, right? So, so again, outwardly, everything was fine. Internally, not so. But as I became more active, my body fat percentage came down. I started to build more, more lean body mass. I actually gained weight. Mm -hmm. so, so, so again, you know, this association between weight and exercise can sometimes be confusing. Right. But I actually gained a significant amount of weight. But I was, I was gaining muscle, lean mm. body mass, and reducing body, body fat. So fast forwarding 15 years on, no, well, more than that now, for, for, you know, yeah, 16, 15, 16 years on, and then deciding, okay, I want to incorporate other lifestyle changes. Mm -hmm. So I improved my diet. I started thinking about, you know, other lifestyle interventions, like my, my sleep quality, mm -hmm. um, like reducing kind of toxic exposure, um, 
thinking, just thinking about how I can optimize my health and well-being mm -hmm. uh, as best as I possibly can in the modern in the modern era. I decided that I couldn't, I could no longer work in the field that I was in. Um, I wasn't passionate about mm -hmm. technology in, in the same way as I used to and, and making money in that field. So around seven, seven years ago, I decided to, to leave banking mm -hmm. um, and I went on a journey, hence why I was called the fitness explorer, because mm -hmm. fitness was what I was most passionate about, Second, mm -hmm. secondary to, you know, um, I suppose food was my second passion, nutrition was my secondary passion, but movement was my primary passion. Mm -hmm. And throughout that journey, I recognized that no matter how wonderful movement is, no matter how powerful it is, no matter what antidote it is to, to many of the ailments of, of a chronic lifestyle disease, we're not doing it. Many of us aren't doing it. Right. Even if we're being told how great it is, mm -hmm. even if we have a personal transformation, um, we may not continue to do it. Right. Um, um, a lot of conventional fitness is framed around aesthetics. Get your six pack, drop a dress size, you know, do something for 28 days and transform your life. Look, yeah. you know, get your huge body, you know, um, have a look at, look at me, look at me, look at me. So that's what most of the messaging is. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people are outside of, of that world of elitism, so to speak. Right. So, so that's when I devised the, the primal play method, um, which was a way of getting humans to move in the way that nature designed, mm -hmm. that we were created or evolved to, to, to be, um, but in a way that was more palatable for right. a 21st century human. So we, we don't have to move to survive as we used to. Right. You know, we, we don't right. have to, to take part in manually intensive labor like we used to have to, to, to obtain food, right? Um, so many of us can click buttons. Um, we, we have machines that will take us from A to B, mm -hmm. you know, take us, we don't, we need to, we don't even need to take the stairs. Right. So we can take, we can take lifts and, and, and elevators and escalators. They will do the, the job for us. Mm -hmm. um, so once you have a, the comfort of being able to sit in a chair and pretty much do everything you need to, to survive, you can communicate, you can order food, <laughs> it can be prepared and ready for you to, to, to consume. Um, you don't need, you can work from your, from your chair, you, right. you kind of can live, you can survive pretty well being sedentary. The downside is unfortunately that you are going to suffer in the long term by increasing your risk of modern lifestyle disease of heart disease, of cancer, of type two diabetes, of stroke, of mental illness, you know, anxiety, depression, mm -hmm. cognitive decline, dementia. I mean, all of these uh, um, diseases, all of these conditions, which are exacerbated by many factors, including diet, of course, including sleep deprivation, um, but also physical inactivity is, is a key factor in the development of these of these diseases and i suppose that initial desire to think about how can i get people to become more active in a way which is fun and engaging but also helpful you know which is also important for our physiology right. but also thinking about the importance and the relevance of the impact on disease right. so that was the light bulb moment for me it was like oh my goodness not only is this good it's kind of good for my health now I want to understand why it's good for my health. I want to understand, I want to research this. I want to understand the, the biochemistry, the physiology, the, 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 you know, what the impact is on me moving today. How does that benefit me now in right. 10 minutes, in a day, in a week? And so now I have this understanding. Right. And that understanding I want to communicate and to educate others. So just as you and I could discuss improving our gut microbiome and mm -hmm. saying, eat these foods right. and you will improve your gut microbiome. You will have more beneficial gut bacteria, which will lead to better health, you know, and you will reduce your risk of gut dysbiosis. So mm -hmm. you reduce the bad guys, so to speak, <laughs> and right. you'll be promoting the good guys, right? Um, we could also have this, a discussion about physical activity and its impact on gut flora. So mm -hmm. for most people, 
they would only associate what you put into your mouth Correct. contributing to gut flora but actually physical activity has been mm -hmm. has been shown demonstrated um to also improve the health of the gut in terms of the gut microbiome right um and and so the areas that we wouldn't normally assume movement to be important in mm -hmm. relation to that's what fascinates me you know? right you know why does it reduce heart disease risk you know i want to know i want to understand why why can it re reduce cancer risk i don't want to be just told generically oh it helps it's helpful right. why is it helpful why what are the mechanisms i want to understand how does it change my biology how does it change my genet my epigenetics mm -hmm. my genetic expression how does how does that you know how does that happen and why mm -hmm. uh, so that's <laughs> a very long winded way of demonstrating my journey from 15 16 years ago to the present day well and i think though i mean i think hearing your journey is important one because um I mean, there's several important points in there. Um, but one is how you talk about the, you know, skinny fat person in terms of, right. you know, how, again, looking at you 15, 16 years ago, you had a normal BMI. Nobody would have ever said, like, you know, you need to lose weight, so to speak, right? Yes. Um, and you highlighted that you actually didn't lose weight. You gained weight but you lost your abdominal fat or your visceral fat, which is the fat that's around yes. the organ. Um, yes. And you did that through lifestyle changes using exercise as one of those main lifestyle changes. And then of course, you know, also getting more interested in nutrition as well, but yes. did use exercise. And so I think for people, one, who are, facing a new um, diagnosis. So similarly, um, you know, I was hypertensive, I would have been metabolic syndrome, right? Hypertensive, mm. um, you know, the prediabetes and then the abdominal mm. circumference, um, yes. which are some of the characteristics. So um, with me, lifestyle changes, you know, was able to reverse that. But I think people, and I had the same kind of medication um, mm. prescription regimen as you, difference um between you and i <laughs> since i was you know went through medical school and i was like oh yeah these are the treatments so i was like okay put me on my blood pressure medication <laughs> so i was blocking yes. blood pressure i probably i took the blood pressure medication probably yes. for four or five years i mean i was on doses my highest dose um of blood pressure medication was procardia 90 which I mean, that's a that's a high dose. Ninety, unless you're in a renal situation, is pretty much the max dose. So I was on right. the max dose, and I was only like twenty nine, thirty. I mean, wow. Yeah, I was young. Yeah. So, um, that, but so whatever. You know, I took the meds for a while, but then still was able to reverse everything with lifestyle. Um, mm -hmm. medication, uh, lifestyle as my medication, I should say, lifestyle yes. as yes. my therapy, you know, yes. to the point where I went from highest dose of antihypertensives to zero, you know, zero drugs today. Um, right. And I think people need to understand that when we say lifestyle, and we're going to get more into the exercise component today, um, mm. but lifestyle interventions really are the most powerful tool that we have. Um, and I am glad that I went through that because I don't know that I would have recognized that. We all say it, but I don't know that I would have recognized it with now the same passion and zest that I have when I talk to my patients for that, when I'm like, let's do a, tri a real trial mm, of lifestyle mm. modifications. And yeah, if, if we, you know, six months, I'm sure if we do some lifestyle modifications, we will notice benefits within six months. If we're not, you know, fine, we'll go to plan B. There's modern technology, yada, yada, yada. But let's yes. give it a real try. And I'm not just going to send you out the door and say, yeah, go eat healthy. Because like, what, what does that, what does exactly. that mean? What does that mean? What does yes. that mean? Yes. It's, not, yes. it's not actual guided therapy. So yes. um, I, I'm glad that you told your story because I want people to see, you know, the different aspects of the spectrum of disease, you know, so I would have had, you know, outward, 
outwardly vanity appearance, you know, obviously people would have told me at the time, you need to lose weight, yada, yada, yada. And yes. I had the same syndrome that you had, the people yeah. outwardly would have looked at you and just said, oh, he's, you know, he's a normal weight. He's normal. Yeah. There was no, no, there were no issues at all in relation to my weight or, or my BMI. Um, um, and, and I suppose that gave me a false sense of comfort for a very long time, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and it was only because I started getting these bloods drawn, you know, which, which wouldn't have been the norm, to be honest. It was more a case of, hey, you know what? I'm a bit interested in finding out a little bit more. So um, by having these bloods drawn and being told, oh, sorry, Mr. Edwards, we do have some concerns. Like, whoa, what, really? At my age? You know, oh, well, you know, you've got family members, close family members with similar issues. Oh, okay, mate, it's just genetic. There's nothing I can do about it. Right. So then realizing, actually, wow, there is something, or fortunately for me, there was something that I could do. Right. And... In the short term, it was purely a case of if I can stave off the, medica the meds for six months, a year, five years, ten, you know, no matter how long I can stave off these meds for, I'm going to be, I must be in a better position. Right. You know, it must mean that I'm in a healthier state. So I, I wasn't aware of the power of lifestyle medicine, you know, to begin with. Right. It was purely a case of I was too scared to take the meds. You know, there was no information there was no information back then about the dangers of statins or, you know, or, you know what I mean? I, I did, right. There were no scare stories. There were no conspiracy theories for me to latch onto. This was purely a, oh my goodness, I'm scared of taking pills. Is there another way? Okay, I found something which appears to be working. Can I keep being tracked, doctor? Yes, we will definitely keep an eye on you. Is everything still okay? Yes. And I had my, my last set of bloods done about two months ago. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be 50 next year, the big 5-0. And so to be told, you know, at my last blood test, everything is great. Um, you know, I'm not on any meds. This is vindication for me um, that I'm going to keep doing this yep. and, until I see <laughs> that it's not, you right. know, that there's that there an issue. But at the moment, touch wood, everything is, everything is great. Um, my, um, but not only, I suppose, the other thing I should mention is not only... Um, did everything change within a relatively short space of time? It's also about the improvements to my health, which are always important. So it's not just the, as you know, health isn't just the absence of disease, right? As in just the absence of infirmity. Um, it's it's complete, you know, social, emotional, mental, and physical health is what we is what health and well-being is truly about. Mm -hmm. So. So that's where I, re I recognize even more the importance of, of physical activity, you know, how it does help you with your managing stress, how it can help with, you know, if you have issues of anxiety or, or mm -hmm. depression or, or mood, you know, improvements in mood. So, so this is also something which is also fascinating, that it isn't just about the physicality again. It isn't just about the fact that, oh, I've got prediabetes. Let me try and exercise my way out of this. There is so much more to physical activity and mm -hmm. our biological need. I mean, this is, the, this is what I need to stress. We have a biological need to move, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. as we have a biological need to eat. You know, motility, mm -hmm. movement is a part of our species. Mm -hmm. And we have the choice uh, to move or not. Right. And, and increasingly, we have more of a choice not to move. Right. But so, so... That's the difference between our present day and the past, where we would have had more options to move for one. We would have had more um, reasons to be doing so. Like, oh my goodness, I wake up in the morning, I've got to get some food. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I can, have a, <laughs> I can have a pay somebody to do that job for me, or I can have to do it myself. And right. the majority of us would have to do it ourselves. So we would hunt or gather food, or we would become farmers. Right. And, and, and wait for the, and, and toil the soil and do all the things that we'd have to do in animal husbandry and the like in order for the harvest and work hard at the harvest to be able to give us food over the winter and start again, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that, was, that was life for us, you know, to walk a certain a given distance. So, so movement wasn't exercise for us right. back then. It was just movement. It was just right. physical activity. Nowadays, the reason why exercise is more important than it's ever been 
uh, is because exercise is like a supplement. It's a substitute mm -hmm. for the lack of physical activity um, that would have been natural for us. So now we don't have to move to survive. Right. So we have to exercise to fill in the, the gaps. Mm -hmm. You know, it's almost like taking a multivitamin, not that I'm advocating, but, you know, if you have, if you have a lack of nutrients in a particular right. area, we can have supplements to try and fill in the gaps to right. stop you being malnourished, right? And so in a sedentary lifestyle where we're mal malnourished from a movement, from a physical activity point of view, mm -hmm. exercise can help to fill in those blanks. Right. Um, and so weight training, resistance training can help us to build muscle, to help build bone, maintain bone density, help obtain lean muscle mass, because we don't have to lift and carry stuff anymore like we used to, but right. we can go to a gym and we can lift and carry. You know, we can do body weight training so that we're getting our muscles and bones and joints working. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't have to walk great distances like we used to right. as part of our day. So we can jog and we can run and we can do aerobic activities to simulate, I suppose that's the word, to simulate physical activities. So I do tend to use movement more so than exercise. Mm -hmm. But exercise is a part of the kind of movement world. You know, it's an important piece. Right. So people who say to you things like, oh, you don't even need to exercise, you just need to move. Well, yes, if your day and your lifestyle allows you to just move throughout the day, right? If you have that type of life and you can mm. do that, then you definitely don't need to exercise. Right. But if you have, have a sedentary lifestyle, which probably means you get up, you prepare yourself for work, you go you're on a chair when you're going to work, you sit, you sit it down, you know, you're sitting on a, in your car or on public transport, you get to work, you sit at your desk, you don't move very often from your desk, probably to go to the toilet, maybe to go for lunch, you're back at your desk, then you come home and you sit on your sofa, <laughs> you know, um, to watch TV. And m many of us have that type of lifestyle. Yeah. Then you need to exercise because yeah. you're certainly not getting enough movement in your day. And if you go to the gym, um, you know, yeah, if you go to the gym, unless you're doing 60 minutes a day, mm -hmm. right, of moderate intensity activity, you're not undoing the six to eight hours a day of mm. seated time, of sitting time. Um, so this is also really important. When I was in the gym or when I hear people saying to me, oh, well, look, I exercise and, you know, it's not making any difference. You know, I'm still, I still have these issues. One, most of those people aren't doing enough. For yeah. one, even though they believe they are. And two, they're probably still spending too much time being sedentary. Mm -hmm. and, and sedentary time, which is the most harmful. You know, it's, it's not breaking up the, the time being seated enough. Mm. Um, and that's when our physiology reverts to accumulating um, the harmful effects. You know, right. that's where chronic inflammation, you know, that, that can creep up on us by being sedentary. There's mm -hmm. no muscle activity. We are almost operating an idol, you know? So just the point of sitting to standing, that alone, just that intervention of spending more time standing can make a significant difference to, to your health. And then the more you do, and the more often you do it, and the more intense it becomes to the point where it's not, you know, the, to the extremes of being physically active, but, you know, going from sedentary to moving a bit more than you normally would to standing a bit more than you normally would will mm -hmm. confer health benefits. Hitting the minimum of 150, recommendation of 150 minutes a week mm -hmm. of moderate intensity activity and two days of resistance training. So that's the, that's the recommendation by pretty yeah. much all public health bodies around the world um, will state that 150 minutes is the minimum that we need to be doing per week mm -hmm. from 18 years old. If you're 65 and above, it's still exactly the same. <laughs> yeah. Um, two days a, a week of resistance training. So most people you hear talking about movement will say, oh, well, I, I go for runs. You know, I'm a runner and I definitely cover my 150 minutes. Yeah. But they're probably not doing any strength training. Right. You know? So they're not doing any resistance training. So then that automatically means they're still physically inactive. Right. They're still not giving their bodies what they need. Or you might have somebody who's just doing 
I don't know, yoga a few times a week and go, oh, I'm definitely getting my 150 minutes. But then they're not getting the cardiovascular effects. Their heart rate isn't high enough to, to be aerobically conditioning. Right. Right. <laughs> right. So they might be getting more flexible. They may be getting some exercise effects, but they're not getting what they, what they need. Right. So again, the advice, a bit like you said about the tailoring of the advice, the prescription of the advice, that's what most people are completely ignorant of. Mm -hmm. What does moderate intensity mean? I mean, I've mentioned this throughout our talk. Most people should be probably going, what the heck does that mean? I have right. no idea what moderate intensity means. Vigorous intensity, high intensity, that just sounds uncomfortable and painful. What exactly does it mean to me? High intensity to me is not the same as somebody who's deconditioned. It's right. not the same as somebody who's in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. for example. Somebody right. who has, who's recovering from injury. Somebody who has, you know, um, a condition which makes it more difficult for them to move. So just saying, like, it's a bit like saying, eat your five a day. Say, that's your, that's your belief. Oh, just eat five fruit and veg a day. Everything's fine. Well, what, what exactly does that mean? Right. You know, is a potato a vegetable? Is a pizza, pizza base a vegetable? Is tomato <laughs> sauce a vegetable? Is orange juice a fruit? You know, um, so the more you know about this, the, the better able you are to make decisions as to what that constitutes. And you can say the same for physical activity. Right. So I know exactly what moderate intensity is for me. And I could advise and recommend to others what that is for them or how they can find out what that is for them. Right. Um, so, for example, if I go for a walk at a leisurely pace, that does not contribute to my 150 minutes per week. Right. And right. so sometimes I walk miles, you know, mm -hmm. like my, I'll, I might walk six, 10 miles on, on, on some days. Rarely, I should say. <laughs> but, I, but occasionally I will, I will do so. And a lot of those walks, I'm not, it's not at a brisk pace. Mm hmm. So for walking speed pace, for myself, a brisk pace is my moderate intensity. Okay. So me leisurely, me walking with the phone, <laughs> you know, me not really paying that much attention to me getting somewhere uh -huh. is probably less, is low intensity. So I may be getting some benefits, but it's not the moderate intensity benefits that I, that I, that I need. Right. So, so just to help people listening, moderate intensity means your heart rate is elevated, above what it would normally be. It means your breathing pattern would start to change. Mm -hmm. So you're getting slightly getting out of breath. You probably have some beads of sweat. Mm -hmm. That's where you're at moderate intensity. And you have to be doing it for a relatively you know, lengthy period of time. 10 mm -hmm. minutes or so is a good, is a good kind of uh, number to aim for, mm -hmm. period of time to aim for. So doing 10 minutes of that type of activity, a brisk walk, that will count to your 150 minutes a week of moderate intensity. Um, not being able to sing and maintain right. your singing voice is a, is a good, you know, because you, you're kind of losing, you're getting out of breath yeah. um, um, is, is a good way to assess moderate intensity. So yeah, I, <laughs> um, so I suppose just to summarize, it's we need to be very clear about the advice we give mm -hmm. to individuals about their exercise prescription, about their movement prescription. Um, and and what we need to be firstly improving our health from mm -hmm. being you know deconditioned from being sedentary physically inactive how can I get out of that and then once you do then thinking about well how can I improve this to optimize this how can I re reduce my risk of these conditions that I'm concerned about how can I improve my chances of health and longevity going forward and independence as I age how can I reduce the risk of Alzheimer's and dementia as I get older? You know, how can I be more independent functionally, you know, to be able to play with my grandkids and right. you know, to do the things that I want to do? So those are the questions that once you start asking them, mm -hmm. um, it's amazing how movement plays a part. Right. Well, and I think, too, as you pointed out, which I think is very important, is that moderate intensity is going to be different things for different people initially yes. based on what your baseline level of physical activity is. Um, That's true. And, and I think sometimes the difficulty, I know just what I've run into, what I've seen clinically is that, you know, if I'm starting with someone whose weight is anywhere between 300 to 400 pounds, 
um, you know, I, we go through different interventions, yada, 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 and I talk to them about exercise or moving more, and, you know, I kind of get a blank stare back, and it's like, mm -hmm. eh. and so it's, it's important to tailor your recommendations to where people are at, because yes. I think it can be intimidating um, to, to start off where people will see these YouTube videos or whatever, people flipping tires and, you know, doing all these different things, which I'm, it's, yeah. is a bad thing if you can do it, but I'm just going to yes. pick someone at 400 pounds and yes. this is what their concept is of exercise or movement. I, yes. Sometimes that's a barrier to even getting started. I think. Oh, for sure. It, it's, I mean, I, I look at those, I look at a lot of those Instagram and, and you know, YouTube and Facebook videos, and most of it is very aspirational. Most of it, I'll be honest, inspires me to look at more videos than it does to actually do stuff. <laughs> right. So, so, and we know, I mean, it doesn't take, it doesn't take, you know, it doesn't take much to convince ourselves that that's what happens because we pay a lot of money to watch people excel at physical activities. That's true. Sports <laughs> persons, dancers, you know, actors, you know, very, you know, we like to watch people being physical. Yeah. People moving their moving their bodies, right? So it doesn't take much for us to, to buy into this, oh wow, look at that person doing that exercise so well, so graceful, so athletic, so you know, all these adjectives we can use, uh -huh. but it doesn't necessarily compel us to action. Most of us will go, Oh, that's not for me. You right. Know, especially if we if we if we're already starting off from a very low level of of capability. Yeah. So, um, and, and, and in my book, Animal Moves, where I, I talk about the importance of our relationship with movement, of, of our relationship to being animals, mm -hmm. um, I talk about how you can assess your starting point. And there's a, there's a very good scale called the Berg uh, scale, mm -hmm. um, which is about a, a relative uh, perception of exertion. And so anyone can say on a scale of one to 10, how hard they're working. Right. So for some people, getting out of a chair is it's going to be work. a significant amount of effort, right? Somebody walking one block, walking mm -hmm. 100 meters. Um, and rather than kind of patronizing them and going, oh, it's only 100 meters, like, right. come on. I actually know that 100 meters to them might be the same as me going for a six-mile walk, right. for example. Right? right? You know, it could be exactly the same feeling of mm -hmm. intensity of how my muscles feel afterwards of, of me getting out of breath say afterwards so um there are mechanisms in place but again we're we're largely ignorant of of, right. of these um so i'm doing the, i'm doing the best i can to educate people around the how much mm -hmm. um and, and you know in a in a time where we don't have much time we're very time pressured and time mm -hmm. constrained but there are ways to reduce the amount of time that you spend by increasing intensity. But again, that means it's more difficult. Right. So you can't apply that prescription to people who really struggle. And the most important with primal play is the emphasis on fun. Right. The emphasis on play, the mm -hmm. emphasis on joy. So again, most people exercise is punishing. It's painful. We tend to like the posts that show this the most. Right. <laughs> so, so people mm -hmm. who tend to be almost looking as if they're torturing themselves with, yep. physical, with, with exercise. Those are the ones we admire. Like, oh, my goodness, look how he, that guy's just thrown up. He's so dedicated to his craft. I would love to be able to be like that. Um, you know, that's what we aspire to. But we're not meant to be professional athletes. We don't need to train like them. If right. you want to flip tires, great. But you don't have to flip a tire you know, like somebody in the NFL would do as part of their training Correct. to improve your physical condition. And let's get back to basics. Right. Just think about the basic movement patterns that we need for locomotion. Mm -hmm. You know, so we need to, you know, sit to stand. We need to walk from A to B. Sometimes we need to walk at a quicker pace or a brisk walk. Sometimes we need to run because we really, like, you know, need to get somewhere in time. Sometimes we need to sprint because, hey, I need to get away from you know, get away to get to safety, mm -hmm. you know, I need to pick things up, I need to lift, I need to carry them and place them down. You know, I need to push, I need to pull. I want to play games like playing tag. 
I would, would be, wouldn't it be great to climb a tree? You know, like, you know, again, some of those activities may not be possible at, right. uh, immediately. Um, but that shouldn't put you off. If, you are, if you're going to be changing your diet, at the outset, somebody telling you, you know, if you're completely eating a fast food diet, right. you know, and then somebody tells you, hey, this is what you should be doing, you don't go, oh, that's fine. I'll, I'll just start doing that immediately and everything's going to be fine. No, it's going to be difficult. You're going to have challenges. You're going you're gonna to sometimes, you know, stray away from that perfection, right? Mm -hmm. But it's the same with movement. You don't have to be perfect. Right. You just have to decide every single step is progress. Right. Every single second I decide to be moving more than taking the more convenient option is going to be more beneficial for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's what, I, that's what I recommend. That's what I do in my own life. I don't necessarily have a set time for exercise. Right. Um, but if I don't, I definitely set a lot of time for movement. <laughs> right? yeah. I, I avoid convenience. I, I now cherish taking the stairs. But trust mm -hmm. me, when I take those stairs, I don't always feel great whilst I'm doing it. Right. And I may not always feel great when I finish it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I may be breathe out a breath. I'm going to be like thinking, oh my goodness, am I really this unfit? It was only 10 flights of stairs. I can't, you know, what, what, what? But actually, I know that it's beneficial for me. That acute stress makes me more resilient. It's telling my body to be stronger, more capable next time. Mm -hmm. That's the signals that my body gets from uh, my muscles and my body moving in this way. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and if you can find a way of doing that, but making it more fun. So here's, here's something else that I do, a, a, a game that I do. So if I'm walking on the high street, walking on the street, um, I will see how many people I can overtake whilst I'm walking. Oh. <laughs> and, and I'll give myself like five points. You know, <laughs> if I overtake them, I give myself another five points. If they're standing still, I might only give myself a point because it's like, well, they were standing still, so it's easy yeah. to take them, right? <laughs> if somebody overtakes me, then I deduct some points. And it's incredible. Like, you know, you start bobbing and weaving in between people and, and you're kind of gamifying it mm -hmm. in a way that you would do as a child. Um, and it becomes really, you know, you forget about the exertion mm -hmm. and you're just thinking about, hey, this is, this is, this is a lot of fun. Right. So, so, so um, being playful for adults is very difficult. Many of us have it lost is. that ability. We, we forget what it's like to be like our inner child. And, 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 and so, uh, um, yeah, just thinking of, of having fun with movement is one of the best ways of ensuring you can maintain your, your movement practice. Yes. And I think, too, for people um, who have children, um, I think using, I mean, not using your kids, I know that's bad to say, but... <laughs> You, they're kind of like a, a source of play for you. So, like, I know yes. um, I'll take my kids to the playground, and we have a Gaga, a Gaga ball pit, um, which, for those who are unfamiliar, it's basically this, you know, um, little pit where you just hit a ball back and forth, but you're trying to dodge the ball. So it's like modified mm. dodgeball. And mm. so... I'm like, okay, I will go after work sometimes because I'm like, okay, today I did charts all day. I sat like way too much. I didn't do anything. And then I'll go play for 90 minutes in the Gaga pit. You know, I'm the oldest person in the pit, but I'm taking out like seven, eight year olds, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I got you. You're out, you know. But, yeah. uh, that sounds great. But it's like, you know, but then the kids around are like, oh my gosh, this is so fun because we're trying to get the adults you know, mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. and then I'm moving and, you know, I'm, I'm out of breath and I'm sore after I play Gaga ball because I'm squatting and I'm, you know, doing all these things that I probably wouldn't do right normally just yes, you would, in yes. my every day. But yes. it's like when you start playing, you kind of forget what you would do, right? I mean, mm -hmm. now you're out here doing all sorts of different moves and you don't even realize it because you're caught up in the game in whatever yes. the physical activity yes. is. Yes, for sure. And, and you know, it, it's, um, it's only humans. Um, you know, there were so many, there were some cons being human in the sense that, you know, we have this incredible ability for creativity, for, you know, language expression, mm -hmm. I mean, in, in exploration, but we, we're, we almost, we also 
hate to recognize um, the kind of the primal aspects of ourselves, mm -hmm. the part of ourselves which we, we shouldn't really be try, trying to switch off. So one example is a big cat, for example. A big cat can still play, jump, prance around with its offspring, mm. with the other sure. cats. You know, they don't just say, hey, you know, now we're a certain age, we're going to yeah. play different types of games yeah. in, a, in a different way because, you know, we have to be adult cats. You know, <laughs> I'm, a tiger. I'm an adult tiger now. I'm no longer a cub. We have to behave differently. Like, no, they will play, but they have the ability, the yeah. benefits of being adults, right? So they have all of this additional capability that they will still use, but in a playful way. So if they play fight, it will look pretty menacing. Uh -huh. You know, if you're observing, you're like, oh my goodness, it looks like they're gonna, they're gonna kill each other. But no, they, they're, they're play fighting. Right. And, and, and so we should be doing the same. We should be having rough and tumble play with our kids. I mean, mm -hmm. they, 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 we should be. We should be helping them climb trees, even if we can't do it ourselves. Right. We should be there helping them do so. We should also spend time not looking at them climbing trees, actually. That, that's something else I want to I wanna add. We should definitely be giving our kids opportunities to have some free range play, you know. Yeah. Um, whether that's in your back garden because you don't live in a safe neighborhood or whether that's because, you know, you recognize that they need to have ways to build their social development and social engineering and communication and they will only do certain things when the parents aren't around the adults you know adult supervision isn't around um and th th that environment which i had the privilege of having as a kid of most of my days in the summer were there were no adults around you were out yeah you know, playing not getting up to too much mischief hopefully <laughs> but <laughs> but this is a significant part of our childhood and and preparing us for our future and, and learning how to resolve conflict and mm -hmm. not expecting somebody else to do it for us all of the time. And, and, um, and, you know, watching, oh, how's that older kid climbing that tree, you know, and how are they getting down? And oh, I don't feel comfortable. I'm not old enough. You know, can you help me out? You know, and, and it wasn't, not everyone was the same age, you know, the right. peer, the peer groups were, were kind of, you know, mixed age and abilities and, and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, parents shouldn't be so uh, consumed with getting their kids to be active based on them being the ones responsible or delegating it to other, you know, teachers and coaches and the like. You know, su right. everything shouldn't be supervised, I suppose, is what I'm, is what I'm saying. Right. Um, and there's some interesting studies, actually, about supervised uh, structured sports mm -hmm. training, you know, uh, an hour, 90 minutes, two hours of structured sport training may actually only mean 20 minutes of actual physical activity, uh, you know, yeah. actual, of actual movement, of actually taking part because they're on the bench, they're watching people doing training drills, they're being, they, they have communication happening, right? So you might be thinking, oh, my Johnny's doing 20, you know, two hours on a Saturday morning playing soccer. Uh -uh. You know, they might only be playing 10 minutes, 15 minutes at the end yep. <laughs> if, them, if yeah. they're picked, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know what I mean? If they're picked to play, um, the rest of it is drills and, and things that can turn, switch certain children off, right? The ones who aren't really good at that be like, oh, I'm not really good, uh, you know? So we yeah. need to be thinking about maintaining some of the traditional forms of play that mo many of us experience of ki as kids. Mm -hmm. maintain as much of that into adulthood as possible. So I, I've had a few people on here saying, oh, I can't believe you're, you know, you're going to be 50 next year. And I'm like, trust me, the, the best anti-aging intervention in my life has been maintaining this playful spirit. Because yeah. 15 years ago, 16 years ago, when I was deadly serious, when I was only thinking about working hard, making money, yeah. going to the gym, beat myself up, I've, I've got to beat everyone in this gym. <laughs> you know, like, I want to yeah. be, you know, having that preoccupation um, was a form of elitism, which wasn't mm -hmm. helpful. I became neurotic about my lifestyle choices. I became overly dogmatic. Mm -hmm. you know? um, and now I'm like, I'm so much happier and I'm so much more helpful because I recognize that I can't control everything. You know, right. I, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, let alone five, 10 years. But what I can ensure is that in the present moment, I can make 
hopefully make the most healthy choices I can. If I don't, mm -hmm. then I haven't, and I'm not going to beat myself up about it. And by playing more, um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm getting more joy out of my yeah. healthful choices. You know, I, right. I'm, I'm exploring, I'm experimenting, I'm, I'm more curious. Uh, mm -hmm. It helps me to be more engaged with people when I'm having conversations. You know, I, you know, I, I, I want the rally, you know, I want the banter. I want to have yeah. an exper more experiences in my life now rather than attaining possessions, which, which was my previous, mm -hmm. uh, my previous approach to life. So play for me um, became the second most important health intervention, actually, after physical activity mm -hmm. uh, and pushed, pushed nutrition to third place, <laughs> uh, you know. But yeah, physical activity, you know, active play became paramount. And then my nutrition supports what I want from physical activity. So I'm like, if I, if I have a poor diet, I know I'm not going to be able to maintain, you know, what I want for movement, right? So there's a partnership there that I don't want to break. Right. I'm not saying movement's more important than, than nutrition, but um, I'm more passionate about movement. And right. it's easier for me to not move. You know, it's easier for me to sit down and play. You know, I was a tech guy. I like playing my Xbox. It'd be mm -hmm. very easy for me to spend 24 hours a day playing Just my Xbox. Uh -huh. if no one told me I had to sleep. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, if it was possible to do it and, and not feel any, anything negative about doing it, I'd be like, yeah, that's another game. Who cares? Yeah, you know. I'm not mm -hmm. making any money, but who cares? I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> you know, all those dopamine hits. So it's, it's easy for us to sometimes encourage unhealthy behaviors mm -hmm. because sometimes you just feel good about it right you eat some food right. that's not really good for you but you feel great you're like oh my gosh in the short term you're like oh wow wow this way right. tastes amazing i want to keep doing this why do i want to revert to healthy foods it's miserable it's boring right. and if you feel the same way about exercise oh it's boring it's painful then a chair is going to feel better right you know, lying that's down is going to feel better but if you get joy out of moving if you get mm -hmm. joy out of your health food choices, your nutritional choices, seeking out good foods, and if that becomes part of, of it, then it, it, the burden of, oh, it's just, I'm just doing this for my health, <laughs> you know? Right. That's not the best motivator either, to be honest. Right. Just because you're doing it for your health. It, it has to be, in my opinion, the, the, the instant almost, not, not gratification, but actually, yes, the instant gratification that comes from making more healthful choices because you enjoy it it's like wow mm -hmm. this is incredible food that i actually made right you know like with right. my bare hands you know like i source the ingredients i found out how to do this and it's really nutritious as a bonus like you know and i want to do this again and i can serve this to my family members and those i care about and i can tell them that there's right. ways to you know they're having they've got diabetes hey you know what it's not inevitable here's some things you can do you know without preaching to them without being you know feelings if you're better you know i had that i had that moment for a while actually where i was like oh, now i know everything now i've got all the answers yeah. you know why have you got bread on your plate i can't believe you know <laughs> you're killing yourself with that slice of bread you know i i was like that for fortunate it was a very short space of time um uh -huh. and people wouldn't invite me for meals how much fun is uh -huh. that right right well, if that, if comes he's going to preach to us about all the things all what everything that's wrong with me on, on my plate you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> why are you getting into a car? You know, like <laughs> it's only a 10 mile walk. Why, you know, why wouldn't you walk 10 miles? You know, so thank goodness I stopped that very quickly and recognize it's about people. People are free to make whatever choices they want. True. Let's make it a bit easier for them. So if it's easier to move more because it's more fun, then you're more likely to do it. Right. Yeah. If our environment encourages us to be more helpful, you know, um, and I think environment, our society has a part to play in this, you know, you know, make that there should be better public transport for people to make it easy for them to take public transport and not okay. have to take their car, right? right? You should have better access to public spaces and parks, to, right. to, you know, safe spaces, you know, places where we feel comfortable being at all times of day, you know, so that we're more likely to use those spaces, right? You know, so... Mm -hmm. There's a lot that we can do as individuals, but I think we also need, we're not just individuals, we're social beings. And so society needs to be formed, you know, a fabric of society should be, how can we push the health agenda along, which isn't just about, 
you know, um, the stick approach, right? You know, yeah. let's tax people for drinking sodas. Let's beat them down for make you know for making bad choices. Right. You know, right. You know, um, you know we need all approaches. Some education, yeah. some taxation, and and you know punitive measures for sure. You know we should yeah. have taxes on cigarettes. We should. They should be. It should be banned in public spaces. Totally. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. There's no. There's no benefit to 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 anyone for for that. But th that shouldn't be the only way. You know. Right. <laughs> You know, to, to, to get people to change their behavior, modify their behavior. There should be some of a, a, of a carrot approach as well, if you eat carrots. Um, <laughs> but, you know, like, there should be a, soft, a softer approach to encourage people to make the better choices. And that's what I try to do with Primal Play. Like, hey, let's play out rather than working out. Let's have mm -hmm. some fun with movements. Let's do something which will last an hour, but it's going to feel like five minutes. You know, imagine... Right. Imagine all those days you'd be playing for eight hours, nine hours, 10 hours all day. There is no way you would have said, oh my gosh, you've just spent 10 hours playing. How right. miserable and boring was that day of all out play, right? Right. <laughs> right. You're probably going, why has the day ended? Right. Why has the sun come down? Why have we got to go inside? Why have we got to go and eat? Mm -hmm. I don't want to eat. I want to continue to play. I want to no? play. Yeah. So, yeah. so physical activity and exercise should, should um, allow for that experience as well. Mm -hmm. So there's a place for beating yourself up. There's a place for performance and punishment. And, you know, there's a place for that yeah. if it suits you. But for the majority of people that it doesn't suit, right. that has to be a softer, a softer way. And I'm, so, I'm really sorry for kind of, I don't want to be hogging this, but I know you have got some questions. So I'm probably, <laughs> no, I don't want to miss out on the questions no. that you have. But uh, as you can see, I'm really passionate about this. And... Um, uh, and I think there is another way of, of, of us achieving more physical activity, more movement minutes in our right. day without feeling bad about it. Well, and I was going to say, I think you've answered, honestly, like through the discussion, I think you've answered a lot of the questions that I have. And like, I know when we were getting ready, you know, this morning and just confirming everything, there was a point where, um, and I, I think you're getting me to rethink my position on it more. Um, in terms of, I think sometimes we'll look at, because again, I deal with people who are um, extremely high BMI, you know, mm. can basically see me and it's either, what they've been told is it's either they need weight loss surgery. I mean, they're at yes. that point. They need either bariatric surgery, you yes. know, or, or you're going to die, right? And so, mm. and then they'll see me and I'm like, okay not saying that you don't meet every indication for bariatric surgery. You do, yes. Yes. but I don't think you've ever tried a guided lifestyle approach to lose yes. weight. So let's see if we can get you to lose some weight first. And if you yes. do, and you're still losing weight, then let's push off that surgery because mm. you're treating yourself, you know, and, and, and you're getting better. And that's kind of the, so I think, you know, I've definitely talked about exercise, but it's come from the point of view where if you want to lose weight, you know, nutrition's going to be the most important. And then you should ooh, exercise. Ooh, ooh, no, 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 no. I'm just saying what, I, what I'm just saying what the, really, I, that's why we're going to, so, but, I, but in terms of that, and I think, <laughs> what it needs to be because this is this is the common message though i'm just saying this is. is like a, a lot of the common message and so it is i think what it needs to be is a more shift like i i still tell people and i still believe that you can't outwork a bad diet because i do feel like nutrition right. serves as the building blocks for you know what it, just in terms of being able to perform and things like that. I think when you're yes. young, you can eat chips and Doritos and stuff like that all the time yes. mm. and still go perform physically well. But yes. I do think over time, that's going to catch up to you. But yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. And, and I, there is, yeah, there is that. I, I do believe it's a misnomer that you, you can't outrun a poor diet. Um, you know, it's 80%, you know, abs are 80% what you do in the kitchen, 20% in the, in the gym and, <laughs> You know, uh, if you want to lose weight, the, 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 you know, the nutrition is the first go-to. So I, I, I definitely want to discuss this because um, there is, well, the best way of losing weight, I would say, and I'm sure no one would dispute this, would be just to stop eating. 
You know, just to stop. Stop. <laughs> Don't put any food in your mouth. And, and, and you know, you will, you will definitely you will lose, lose You will lose some weight, right? Um, so... Hey guys, we got cut off. I wonder, there might be a time limit on Instagram. I didn't realize that. Um, so I'm gonna see if Daryl pops back on here, but I almost wonder if Instagram cut us off. Um, let me see, I've never had that. All right. All right. Did Instagram cut us off? I don't I know think what it, happened. Yeah, so apparently they, they cut us off after an hour. So I apologize <laughs> for, you know, not being more succinct. I That's okay. The, well, the I, want finish, me. I want you to finish your point about... Yes, um, so I'm going to be very, very quick. Wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Um, <laughs> um, and yeah, if you do have... Anyone listening, if you do have some questions, please uh, fire a few of them our way. In, in terms of... Um, weight loss, exercise and weight loss. So most research will say that dietary interventions, you know, better nutrition is more effective than exercise. And um, one of the reasons for that is if you look at most of the research comparing exercise with nutrition, mm -hmm. it tends to be on severely calorie restricted diets. So most studies mm. will have 500 calorie, 500 calorie diet uh, per, you know um, versus 500 calories of physical activity you know so or 500 calories versus 30 minutes of, of exercise daily and they'll go oh my goodness there was far more weight loss with the you know calorie restriction calorie controlled diet than exercise and yes I totally agree but that's not a practical way of managing uh, weight long term if you look at the research in, um, in terms of success in the long term, exercise in combination with diet right. is far more successful at maintaining mm -hmm. um, uh, initial weight loss mm -hmm. than any other intervention. Okay, and um, and I think that's and and the reason why that is is because there are some things you get from physical activity that you can't get from reducing the amount of calories, whether it's fasting, right. or whether it's calorie restriction, or, or any other type of diet. There's mm -hmm. certain things you cannot get by dieting. So here are a few reasons why physical activity is really important. One, it's the only way to increase um, the amount of lean body mass you have. Okay, so actually as an additive. So with dieting, you can reduce the amount of body fat, but you're not actually increasing your bod lean body mass, you're just, you're just in uh, improving the ratio. Right. right. So if you exercise, so if you just diet alone, this is your body fat here and this is your lean body mass on here, then I, I diet, I'm losing body fat. Oh, this is good. I'm losing body fat. Losing but I'll also lose a little bit of lean body mass because I'll, I'll probably lose some protein as well. Mm -hmm. so, so that kind of happens, right? If, if I exercise and diet, then I'd be improving my lean body mass as well as reducing body fat. So you'll actually have a better ratio you'll be improving your lean body mass, mm -hmm. right? So by increasing your lean body mass, you will also be raising your metabolism. Okay. So muscle tissue is more metabolically active than fat, than adipose tissue. Right. So you'd be burning more calories at rest mm -hmm. if you're exercising than if you just rely on nutrition alone. Mm -hmm. So without eating, without changing your diet, just by exercising and increasing your lean body mass, You'll be you'll become more of a furnace, right? Um, because you'll be more met your muscles will be more metabolically active. You'll be burning calories at rest. Also, when your body's repairing and recovering from physical activity, mm -hmm. you also be having a higher thermogenic effect. Mm -hmm. So, so again, it's another reason why you're burning more calories at rest. So, I know calories can be a bit of a dirty word for some people, uh, but you know this is the best measurement we have. Right. And, and, and I think the metabolism aspects of physical activity can't be ignored, can't be um, disputed. Um, and so if somebody was 400 pounds and they had to pick one intervention, um, you know, and they're really, you know, exercise is painful and they're really, they're really struggling to move. 
then definitely do whatever you can to reduce their body weight. And if that's fasting, if that's going on a low carb diet, that's going on a calorie control diet, just to get them to shift some body weight to improve their, you know, how they feel psychologically, mm -hmm. you know, better about themselves. Oh my gosh, here's some progress. Then add exercise. Then great. But I would I would suggest mm -hmm. having suggesting both of them immediately they'll get even more success so all the things right. you're trying to get from diet alone um you can get an, a better effect by doing both of them so i wouldn't suggest just exercising um as you as your only intervention i would say do do both of them do and both. somebody who really struggles you probably want to focus on what they're going to be better at right so i would say um probably resistance training actually mm. is more beneficial for somebody who's significantly, um, you know, he's with obesity or overweight, is okay. a better starting point because they are, you know, they, they're going to have strong bones because they're carrying so much weight. That's true. They're going to have strong bones. The muscle that they have is also going to be relatively strong because, again, it's carrying a lot of, a lot That's of weight. That's true. Right? So that would be a better starting point. You know, jumping, running, all that sort of stuff is probably going to be too hazardous for them, you know, in, mm -hmm. increased risk of injury. So just doing body weight squats, things that they can, that are possible for them. You know, they may not be able to do a push-up. Right. You know, you know that's, not, that's not the sort of exercise you would give them. But them doing a body weight squat, for example, that's a significant amount of, of body weight that they're moving against gravity. Um, and you're going to be, again, you're going to be teaching your body that it's okay to move, that I need to be stronger and more capable, capable at this. So the, they're getting stronger at a higher body weight, which means as they start losing weight, they're going to be even stronger comparatively. Mm -hmm. So that would be my suggestion. And that's what I do with my clients. So I, mm -hmm. I do have some, some, you know, those who are severe, you know, I'm not going to change, change the terms over, over so many times now, stage one, stage two obesity and the like. Right. Right. But I do have do have some clients, and I'm like, we're just going to get you moving. We're just going to get you comfortable with what mm -hmm. you can, with what you can do. And it may only be a few minutes, like one right. minute, two minutes, and that they may be out for the count. They may need a day or two to recover. It's like, yeah, you just do a little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah. We we focus on your diet support to support this. So yes, yeah, so the research tells us that both interventions, more interventions, is more is actually more beneficial right. than just relying on one one alone um, right. and there are you know if i can get a bit more technical there's one more thing on the technical side there's a hormone released called irisin mm -hmm. which is only activated by muscle contraction mm. and irisin actually uh, is a fat it's a, it's a fat burning hormone um activated by exercise and it's only activated by exercise and so this will improve your ability to burn to burn body fat over and above you know again nutrition nutrition alone um so yes there's a few, few bit of science in there well no and that's important and i think too you know some of the issues um that i have with a lot of the um dietary studies so and um you know we'll hear a lot about the mediterranean diet and so they're like you know we've studied the mediterranean these are the healthiest people in the world Everyone yep. should eat like them. And and the thing that I like to point out, and I'm not saying that their their nutrition isn't healthy. I mean, eating more whole foods is, is a nutritious way to live. I'm not disputing yes. that. Mm. But it's a lifestyle that yes. the people are living. And so what yep. we're not looking at is that with me sitting in Kansas City, yes. can I live a Mediterranean lifestyle? That's yes. the thing. Like, I mm. I don't know that I can live a Mediterranean lifestyle. I don't live in the Mediterranean. Yes. But you you know, and so that's where you're getting at, and that's that's why it makes sense that you really do need to prescribe movement with nutrition at the same time, because yes. um, people you, you were moving like we talked about earlier. You know, if you were farming all day. You you don't what you don't need to do burpees. You were out. I yes. mean, you you were out planting and tilling and harvesting and squatting and bagging yes. and lifting and do you know what I mean? All of that all day long. You yes. you don't need to go do something else extra. Exactly. Um, You're too tired. You're yeah. completely phys physically fatigued. 
And you right. know, we didn't have the machines that we have now. So farmers today are not, are not doing the work well, right. of that, old, that we would have done like even, even a generation ago or two ago, or, and yeah. definitely like, way before then. So yeah, I think there's a synergy, you know, and, and I, I focus a lot on evolutionary biology um, and you know, anthropological evidence. And so if you think about it, like, you know, there's a, if you think about our evolution, our evolution evolved with movement being a significant part of our day. Or, you know, if you believe in creation, then, you know, God created us to be able to source, hunt, gather right. food, right? He didn't go, hey, you know what? You know, food is just going to be plentiful available. You don't have to do anything physically to get it. You know, mm -hmm. you had to, physicality was part of your ability to obtain food. And even once you get that food, you know, there's a significant mechanical component <laughs> to, right. of breaking our food down in the mouth. Right. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like, movement is so intrinsically, uh, it, it, in, in my opinion, it's the top of the food chain. I'm using food chain, but no pun intended. But it's, it's, it's paramount because if you yeah. couldn't move, you weren't getting that nutritious food. Mm -hmm. And so, so I think there needs to be an association of in the present day of saying, well, fine, you don't have to go and hunt your food, but food is kind of the partner to physical activity. Right. So if you move, you're going to get more nutrients. Here's something else I've thrown from in. You're going to get more of that nutrient benefit if you move. Mm -hmm. Because if your body's going, oh, I don't need that calcium from the food, the bones are fine as they are, what happens, right? Your body goes, I'll get rid of the calcium. Don't need it, right? If you're, if you're breaking your, and rebuilding bone as part of the repair process of physical activity, your body's going to go, oh, wow, all of that nutrition, all that calcium and magnesium and all those essential minerals that are in this food, I want to make sure I use every single, yeah. every single iota of this to rebuild and repair, right? So even, even something like that, to maximize nutrient absorption, to maximize motility of food going for the GI tract. That's all improved by physical activity. So we have to see the synergy for what it is. Right. It is a synergy. It supports whatever we're trying to achieve as our outcome. We have to think about all of the things that support that. Sleep yeah. is also part of that, right? Sleep is yeah. part of the repair process, you know, helps the, you know, rebuilds the immune system overnight, mm -hmm. helps us to prepare ourselves for the next day again helps us to prepare ourselves to be able to be physically active the following day. Right. You know, <laughs> you know it's like, this is all part of that cycle. Right. Um, and so I don't want to go back in time for many reasons, but I do want to pay uh, respect the, the, um, and reference how we got here. Uh, and so part of that are the movement patterns and the templates of foods that we ate. And we certainly weren't sedentary at any point in our hum in human no. history. We right. were sedentary as we are today. And certainly we weren't obtaining these artificial and processed foods, which are predominant today. So right. even if you only take those two things out of this conversation, that we at no point have we thrived on artificial processed foods, mm -hmm. poor quality foods, high energy dense, poor nutrient dense foods, neither have we thrived in a sedentary environment where we just don't, we're just not moving. Mm -hmm. there, there you go. Yep. <laughs> and then I'm going to get to some of the questions that people have asked. Um, and, but I want to put a thing just on the tail end of what you said is that for me, my um, background comes from OBGYN. And mm. I think we also need to remember to apply this to pregnant women. Pregnant women during history also did not all of a sudden upon conception, put their feet up and stop moving. So yes. you also need to continue physical activity during pregnancy. It's not going to increase your risk of complications. Now you may not be, you may have to modify your activity as the trimesters progress. So Definitely. don't expect to do the same type of workout that you could do pre-pregnancy or at eight weeks, at 20 weeks and at 30 weeks and whatever, but yes. movement, you, you got to keep, we, we have to keep going and you just modify yes. it. That, that's definitely right. And I mean, you'll reduce your risk of, you know, um, uh, you know, diabetes that can occur during mm -hmm. pregnancy. 
yes. by, by, by moving more. Um, of course, you become more flexible, unfortunately. So you do produce hormones. Relaxing is one of the hormones. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're doing lots of yoga, for example, you certainly do not want to continue <laughs> doing <laughs> something that's very easy in the first trimester and, tr and continue to do that because your body, you know, you'll start yeah. you know, dislocating and I mean, all sorts of things can happen. But, but yes, it's important. Movement's important at, at, at all stages of our- Every of our, stage. Every stage, all ages, regardless of our ability. And um, yes, it's finding, it's finding what you enjoy, what you enjoy, what you enjoy. And, and, and which is at the kind of in the sweet spots. So not yeah. doing too much, um, which can be possible and not doing too little. So find that sweet spot where you're getting enough movement of a, a wide variety where it's not, you know, you're not thinking, oh my gosh, I'm not, don't, can't find time for anything else, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm obsessed, but you don't want to be obsessed. You don't want to be orthorexic about it. Um, you just want to be enjoying the benefits of becoming more active for your mental and physical health. Yes. And so looking at some of the questions, um, I'm going to scroll up and find some, and then some came through from the other talk. Um, but this is from I am Dr. Arumala. Um, sure. And she said she just joined. So when she came in, you were talking about um, the hormone discussion on what's activated um, mm. exercise. Her question said, is this activated only during fasting? But not this particular hormone. You were referring to a hormone that was um, activated during uh workout mm -hmm. and i'm trying to remember what hormone you said oh um not not ibisin wasn't ibisin was it ibisin i think so yes I ibisin yes so. so yeah ibisin was was only discovered in 2012 actually which is why <laughs> which is why not many people are, are aware of it um so yes, yes this, ibis, this this hormone is only activated um from muscle contraction um no no other mechanism exists for for activating mm -hmm. this hormone um, um, and it's as well as it, it, um, it converts white adipose tissue to brown adipose tissue. So mm -hmm. brown adipose tissue is more metabolically active. It's what babies tend to have, you know, you know, um, it supplies energy very easily readily to the body, but it also is cancer fighting. So it has, a, it's 22 mm -hmm. times more powerful than, uh, than other hunter killer cells in the body. So, so it's, it's a powerful tumor suppressant as well as fat burning hormone um just to add one more quickly uh lipoprotein lipase mm -hmm. is an enzyme which breaks down fats in the blood so triglycerides that's also activated by by muscle contraction um so the larger muscle groups like the glutes the back the the, the back of the legs for example um we have lots of muscle contraction Lipoprotein, lipoprotein lipase is produced, which is one of the reasons why when you're sitting a lot and a lot of those muscles are deactivated, mm. um, you, you can increase the circulating levels of, of, of lipids such as triglycerides. Um, so there are two, those are probably two worthwhile thinking about and learning more about irisin and lipoprotein lipase. So if you think about it, you can do things to avoid, uh, you know, you can improve your lipid profile by changing your diet, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, but there are things that you can add to your lifestyle, such as more physical activity, which will give you the same result. So if you're doing both, it's a double, it's a double right. win, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. And that's why they should go together, for they sure. Together. So that makes sense. Um, we have another question from uh, Better Fasting. And this says, what do you recommend to get rid of visceral fat? Uh, well, the research suggests that resistance training and high intensity interval training are the best exercise interventions for reducing visceral fat. The reason being is because visceral ta fat tends to be the most uh, metabolically active. Mm -hmm. So it's the easiest to break down, um, to be utilized as, as, as energy. Um, but it, that also makes it the most harmful because it's more likely to, uh, you know, it can basically surround the most of the internal organs. So that's why it's the most harmful of, of, of body fats. So yeah, resistance training and um, high intensity interval training. Um, high intensity interval training, unfortunately, is very, very, very difficult. 
mm -hmm. for most people to do. Yeah. The intensity required is almost impossible. You have to be well trained mm -hmm. to do so. Uh, for mere mortals, if you think about sprinting flat out, mm -hmm. like flat out, like you know, you could only run for you know, I don't know, forty meters, fifty meters, fifty yards. Flat mm -hmm. out, that would be high intensity. That gives you an idea of how tough that would be. You're, you're coughing and spluttering at the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, can't, you can struggle to walk afterwards. So resistance training is, is probably an easier way of getting, getting that, that result. Okay. And then this is a question. Um, do you have a, uh, this is also from Better Fasting. Do you have a certification program for instructors to lead primal uh, primal play for Ooh. your method, do you have a kind of a, a course where people, I guess, can learn to to use your method? Yes, I do have a certification program. Um, if you go to primalplay.com forward slash certification, um, then you can find out more about about the program. So I do I do run it a few times a year in the UK, but also in the US. Travel to the US. I do tend to run a, a few of those certifications um, as well. So it's an on, it's an in-person and online program, a combination of the two. That's awesome. And uh, thank you for asking that question, um, yeah. asking, because I think we, um, as I look and see the different handles that are popping up, there's a lot of people who are um, either uh, into fitness or health. So I think that's going to benefit them as well to be able to have something else under their tool belt do you know what i mean to help to help offer people yes um and then let me see oh um, quick, quickly this... i just i've just, oh, go just got one here actually so oh. how do you spell iris the hormone irisin it's i r i s i n that's irisin i just saw somebody ask that question okay Thank you, because I'm popping back up. I, if you see questions too, definitely jump in, because there's this little Q&A box that I click, and then I like can't see the screen anymore. Okay, I've got another uh, question. When is it a so... danger to work out on, a, on an empty stomach? Um, oh, well, if you use evolutionary biology as our reference, most of our hunting uh, phases would have been on an empty stomach. So right. you would hunt in the morning, you start hunting in the morning, you wouldn't have a breakfast. Um, so you would be pretty much on an empty stomach. So I would suggest for some people that exercising on an empty stomach is not a, is not a problem at all. I would say there are some, um, and this is just a personal opinion. I don't, have any, I don't have any research on this to back this up. And that is that for some people, if you're already highly stressed, if you're a highly stressed individual and, and, you, and you're fasting and you've been fasting for a long period of time and then you try and do something which is very demanding physically, that may be quite a lot of, of stress to be mm. dealing with. And if you're doing that on a regular basis, you may not be giving your, your body time to adequately prepare and recover. Mm -hmm. So I would not make it a regular daily, a daily occurrence. Sometimes I do exercise in an empty stomach. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes I do exercise have, after having a breakfast. So I kind of mix, I kind of mix things up. Um, but yes, so, so I would say there are very few reasons to, to avoid that. Um, there is some evidence that fasting on exercising in a fasted state, you actually do get more of the fat burning effect. Mm -hmm. you, you are more likely to, to, to have to be reducing visceral fat as long as you make sure that the exercise is at higher intensity. So right. going for a walk, brisk walk, is not what you want to be doing. You want to be working out quite a, a vigorous intensity and above is what you want to be aiming for. Mm -hmm. So running, fast run, sprints, um, you know, circuit training and the like, resistance training, quite high repetitions of resistance training will also be a good protocol for, for you. And that piggybacks off of uh, just Candice 313's question who was just saying, how safe is it to work out and use intermittent fasting? And so you, um, I mean, pretty much answered that. It's um, if you're not doing an extended fast, so if it's simply mm -hmm. that you haven't eaten, you know, like you went to bed, you stopped eating after sunset, you get up first thing in the morning, you're going yeah. to go work out. 
that still is considered, you know, fasting or working out in a fasted state. And yes. that has benefits. But if yes, you sure. are trying to, you know, undergo an extended fast, Mm. You you may run into there's certainly people who do work out during extended fasting, but yeah. again, that might not be something that you may want to regularly participate in. Um, and extended fasting also is not something that you need to do on a regular basis. You I know, totally the, agree. Yeah, the intermittent fasting mm. I think is something you can do daily, just because again, if we look at how we evolved um, just over time, once the lights went off what or once sunset activity yes. stopped i mean if you can't see in front of your face you're not fixing a plate so yes. you you stopped eating at sunset and then mm. when you got up in the morning your first thing was to go accomplish task it wasn't yes. you know where, where is my food and so <laughs> we've we've now just coined that term right as intermittent fasting but that was just life Right. Yeah, that's that's a. I mean, that's a really good point. I think you know that kind of restricted eating window or intermittent fasting that you know sixteen to eighteen hours. Say, I, I think it should become more of the norm. Right. Um. It, um. And um. And you know, having not kind of snacking and not mm -hmm. you know having lots of small meals is not is not something that we would have done traditionally. You know. So. Right. So breakfast is breaking the fast, as we know. As we know. Yes. So the the, the name establishes what we were doing prior, right? We were, we were in a fasted state before eating our first meal of the day. That was, that was breaking the fast, breakfast. And, um, and yes, so I think in that situation, it, it's, it's perfectly fine for you to be exercising. Once you start getting into extended fasts, you know, 48 hours, 72 hours and the like, this is my, again, it's a personal opinion. When I have, mm -hmm. done, I have done one or two extended fasts, I, it's not something that I, that, that it's not not for me, but I do intermittent. <laughs> I do do intermittent fasting. Your energy levels drop so low, mm -hmm. um, or it did for me anyway, that you just can't do a workout justice. You know, you need from a workout, you need a significant physical stressor acutely to obtain the benefits, whether that's cardiovascularly or resistance training. So you need to be kind of pushing yourself. I, I, to a degree for your body to go oh here's a stimulus that's going to help to repair that's going to help to heal that's going to help me become more accomplished at this task if you're so low on energy and ability because you haven't eaten for a few days and you try to exercise and you're going at a a so-so performance there's no point i would say there's no point doing it you'd probably be thinking <laughs> about food more than thinking about the workout right right, <laughs> so, right yeah that's a really good that's a really good point um yeah yeah. And See I think how you feel. If you feel like you have the energy to be able to perform and do your workout or play out justice, then go ahead. You're intermittently fasting, then go ahead. The, the research supports that, as mm -hmm. well as anecdotal uh, evidence and personal experience supports, supports that. And as you said, fasting was not, apart from religious practices, fasting was not by choice, right? You right. know, if there was food available every day, our ancestors wouldn't have gone, hey, this, what do you think it would be like not to eat for a few days just because? <laughs> no, that, <laughs> you know, it's going to be healthy for us not to eat. No, nah, it didn't happen. <laughs> you know, they, they chose for religious cultural reasons to do so. Um, <laughs> and science now tells us there are health benefits in doing so. But the restricted eating window, I think, is more powerful a mechanism, mm -hmm. as, you, as you say, you go to bed, sundown, you don't eat again until you wake up in the morning. That's probably at least 12 hours for yeah. most people. Um, if you extend that to noon or so, you're getting 16 hours. And that's where the evidence tells us you start getting most of the benefits of intermittent fasting. 16 mm -hmm. to 18 hours is that sweet spot. Right. And that's what I would hope. And this is probably a little radical, but I mean, I would hope that, you know, 50 years from now, people, it's... Um, expect not to eat once the sun goes down you know and it's just yes. become like more of a routine instead of people thinking oh my gosh I can't believe you haven't eaten in so long I'm like mm. no I just I, I just stopped eating like once the sun went down like that's it there that's it yeah. why, why is that radical why why is that radical that I stopped eating when the sun was down oh and by the way when the next thing when I got up in the morning 
I didn't run to the fridge. I got up <laughs> and I like actually showered first and, and got dressed and, and maybe yes. read a book. And then I was like, oh, okay, I should eat now. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's just, yeah. we, we have to frame our, kind of shift our mindset. And similarly, hopefully, as we start to um, recognize the importance that movement has played and rather trying to find excuses as to why we don't need to move, but to find reasons to say, you know what, we can move, whether it is to incorporate more play or just more fun activities and kind of get out of this concept that you're only doing meaningful movement if it's a, a regimented program where first you do, you know, X amount of this and followed by X amount of that. If we could just get back to incorporating more play, more natural movements, but things that were conscious, are they actually getting our heart rate up? Um, you mentioned before taking the stairs. I mean, there's a reason why the stairmaster is always empty at the gym. Stairs <laughs> are hard. Like yes. that's, it's like they're hard, you know? I yes. mean, doing that, building up to that, and then also finding ways to be more active outside of um, the office. I mean, I think that really will benefit everyone. Um, yes. And that, I we just we need to kind of get back to what we were doing a lot of the diseases we have now are all diseases of modern society so we're not yeah. dying from rampant infections and things like that anymore and you know mm -hmm. a bear is not eating most of us or we're not fighting a lion but we're now dying of things that they, these this just didn't happen yeah yeah exa exactly exactly so, yeah we, we we know we know you, know, you go back a hundred years, you know, um, you know, 1919, you know, influenza, diphtheria, diarrhea, dysentery, th those were the, 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 the number one you know, <laughs> through to five killers. Um, and it didn't take much <laughs> to be for once those diseases were under control for heart disease, cancer, uh, and so on to become the, the, the biggest killers. And they still are today in the developed world. So, so um, you know, whatever we can do to prevent these issues to recognize that our lifestyle is the is the the biggest risk factor mm -hmm. to to most of these conditions are based on on our lifestyle some of which we have control over some of which we don't right right we can't control everything but what we can control tends to be you know how often we move how we move our food choices uh, mm -hmm. and how often we eat you know how we approach sleep and, and stress Etc. Uh, Etc. Et so whatever we can control, um, and you feel able to do so, that's where you want to invest most of your your time and energies. Right. And um, I, I just want to highlight your TED talk that you did, and you have the link here. Um, but Daryl has a great talk on um, movement exercise, and you can go to www.primalplay.com slash TEDx. T-E-D-X talk. And so you'll be able to see the importance of movement there. Um, and also, as we mentioned before, visit his website, primalplay.com. Um, and for the people also who have, um, I mean, we this talk definitely should have convinced us that we should all have an interest in movement. Um, but if you also have an interest in movement as part of your profession, um, he does offer um, certification so that you can help introduce this method, um, you know, in your local communities, with your clients, with other people. And I know personally, our family um, bought the Animal Moves card deck for children. And mm -hmm. so we do those with our kids. Um, I can say I'm certainly sore and they have to like pry me off the floor after trying to do some of the moves that my kids do effortlessly. Um, but it's fun, you know, and it's better than turning on the TV. It gives us something else to do. Um, and so he's just a great resource. If you haven't checked out his website and follow his Instagram, a great resource for you to start thinking outside of the box on what it really means to move. So. Oh, thank you so much. I, I, I really appreciate it. I hope I'm not blushing now, but, but no, I, really, I really appreciate the, you, you know, your feedback. And, um, and I, I just saw very quickly, I, just, I don't want to miss this point out because I think this is something that lots of your 
lots of the listeners will have an interest in. Um, Bether Fasting here mentioned that inflammation is the killer now. So just to tell you about this, so, you know, the recognition of that physical activity plays on inflammation. Mm. Um, so chronic inflammation, systemic inflammation, known, recognizes the kind of root cause or definitely symptomatic of many chronic lifestyle diseases will be reduced mm -hmm. uh, with, with ongoing physical activity. So any markers you can think of that, you know, CRP, for example, homocysteine, um, you know, uh, interleukin. I mean, there's a whole host of, of, of cytokines which are pro-inflammatory. These are all dampened down. These are all regulated. These are all suppressed if you're physically active. Mm -hmm. And they're more likely to be elevated if you're, if you're sedentary. So again, you can be looking at things like anti-inflammatory diets, at, at removing certain foods from your diet to reduce inflammation, but we have something that can impact this immediately, which is more, more movement. So you have acute inflammation because you have acute physical stress, so your body responds. Muscle soreness, for example, is acute inflammation. DOMS, mm -hmm. delayed onset of muscle soreness, is, an acute, is acute inflammation. But that acute inflammation means there's chemical signals, signals chem chemical messengers that actually reduce inflammation, that promote anti-inflammatory agents that come from muscle contraction. So irisin is one of these agents that comes from muscle contraction, and there are a whole host of others which do that job. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, so don't, you know, many people associate inflammation being a problem of just the poor diet once again. Right. But, but a sedentary lifestyle is also a significant um, you know, uh, benefactor in relation to that as well. Right. No. And also too, um, for people who joined, whether you joined the first half or the second half, um, thankfully my husband is really good at splicing stuff together. So we'll <laughs> combine the first part of what's in the Instagram stories with this part and then, um, be able to post a link to it later on. So you can, see the discussion after 24 hours um, because I don't know about you guys, but I am inspired to like get up and go run like right this second and, <laughs> and do some body weights like seriously. And uh, I just, um, you know, I, I think personally I've under, I mean, I've, ex I've exercised. So it's interesting. I mean, I do it um, and I enjoy it, but I don't know that I ever wrapped my mind around how good it was for me. So fortunately, I, I do it. And I think once, if you've been heavier set before, once you start to lose weight, you just start to incorporate other activities, or at least for me, I did. I wanted to do more things. So I think for me, it was kind of just a natural progression. Um, but I, I certainly, I, I can admit that, um, I've certainly underestimated um, just how much I was doing for my body um, outside of also changing my nutrition and breaking up my cycle of constantly eating and, and things like that. So hopefully you guys um, receive that same message. And I think the key is just start at where you are. Your fitness yes. level is not necessarily going to look like someone else's fitness um, level. And, and that's okay. But you're doing this for you and really your only kind of marker or competition is yourself. So you yes. push your body to do new and incredible things. And that's going to look differently for your body versus my body versus Daryl's body versus anybody's body. Yes. Um, but you are going to get benefit. And I think that's the key take home. And if you want to have some commonality, um, because if you want to make, if you want to view that everyone is equal, <laughs> then, you're comparing yourself to your sedentary self. So that is the same for all of us. Mm -hmm. The sedentary self that's like, oh, doesn't it feel good just doing nothing? Doesn't it feel good just sitting in this chair, like, oh, relaxing, chilling, oh, this, you know, that version of yourself is what you want to compete against. Yeah. Is what you want to compare yourself again, against. So if you're just, if you're, if you can only sit to stand, if that's your entry point to do more than just sitting, fantastic. If you're already doing some running, but you're not, you know, you're not doing any resistance training, for example, here's your opportunity to say, yeah, my sedentary self is okay doing a bit of running every now and again, but I'm not doing any resistance training. I need to add some of that, of that on. 
if I'm happy sitting for eight hours a day at work and not getting out of my chair, I need to make sure I break up periods of physical inactivity with more movement. So, so I, I think, you know, that's the comparison, as you said, against yourself. Um, don't compare yourself against other people. Compare and despair is not what you want, want to be doing. Right. Just focus on the fact that most days you are going to choose the more sedentary day. Even myself, <laughs> you know, we are. We are going to yeah. choose that. So you have to make a decision to avoid that day as best as you possibly can. Yes. Well, no, that's great. And I think this is going to help a lot of people. Um, and then also, as we already mentioned, people checking out um, the TED Talk that you did on your website and just, um, you know, finding more ways to move. Um, and again, this will be in the stories for 24 hours and then we'll splice it, put it together, download it and so that it can be replayed in the future. So oh, it's been great. You've been All a right. fantastic host. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you for coming on. I appreciate you taking your time to, to come on. And we'll have to definitely do this again. This is great. No, thank you so much. You've been a great host. I love all of the questions. And just to finally say, if you do get to watch the TED Talk, guys, um, if you could comment on YouTube, if you could share it, I would really appreciate it because I really want to get this message out there as to how we can tackle this epidemic of physical inactivity. So thank you so much for your time, everyone. Okay, great. Uh, yes. And um, we w I'll, will also post in my stories like a screenshot of the TED Talk too, so people can um, just be reminded where they need to go to see that as well. So, all Thanks. right. Well, everyone, enjoy your day. And if you don't do something movement-wise today, I guess you weren't listening. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> right. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye. Yeah.